Hello and welcome to Face to Face on City TV. My name is Omaru Sandamado. My guest is one man whose name actually attracts controversy. And since he was just recently given a job, it is already raising lots of controversy and the headlines are cracking up. Stay with us. I'll tell you who my guest is. He's a general who has never gone to war in the real sense of the word before. He's a politician, a former committee chairman, a local committee chairman at the local assembly level, and as uh, assembly member, a member of parliament, deputy minister, general secretary in opposition and in government, and now he's been appointed a member of the parliamentary service board. John Cena said when is his real name, but if you say that, nobody will mind you. General Mosquito, you're welcome to Face to Face. <laughs> Thank you, my brother. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. By are you, have you recovered from all the stress of elections? Very well. So. You're, you're well, okay. Very so, much. So. Let's say congratulations on your appointment. Uh, well, as you wish. <laughs> <laughs> tell, tell us um, why you were appointed. Did you, did you lobby to be a member of the Parliamentary Service Board? Oh, not at all, not at all. I think that uh, it is an invitation to assist Mr. Speaker to discharge his responsibilities. And uh, everybody knows that uh, between myself and Mr. Speaker, we have stood behind each other. He has stood behind me in my job as a general secretary. And uh, so if he finds himself in a new position and he thinks that I have a role to play there to make him succeed, I, I, I think... So he invited you? Yes, he did. There are people who think that you are a party general secretary. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't be intruding in the works of parliament, the legislative arm of government. What do you say to that? And what is the procedure or criteria for appointment? Share with us, since you are a former MP, share with us what the procedure has always been. And, and why what has happened to you is not out of place. Then drive all the MPs away from Parliament because they are politicians. <laughs> <laughs> because they are politicians. That's parliament it. is the citadel of politics. And so it is interesting to hear people saying that uh, you should introduce politics into Parliament. Where else should politics be played? Parliament is the citadel of politics. I'm and not in on fact, the board. Well, it doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter as far as I'm concerned. And you know, the lawmakers know why they make certain laws, know why they put certain restrictions on some people not be occupying certain positions. And in this particular case, they didn't talk about anybody's uh, other assignment in politics. Um, in, in if it is an appointment to the judiciary or some other positions, they will tell you. Uh, which and which person cannot be there. In this particular case, the qualifying criterion is that you must be a former member of parliament. And uh, I've been a former member of parliament for 12 years. I don't know who better qualifies than myself. Okay, so that's, only that's why you and Abraham Osei Edu yes, were, yes. were nominated. Yes. So in the past, what is the picture like? It has always been like that. Uh, you know, the first parliament, that is from 93 to 97, there was no parliament service board at all. Okay. And I was one of the MPs who was very outspoken, calling on the system to establish a parliament, uh, parliamentary service, service board. board. Because in the absence of the board, then the owners falls on the speaker and the clerk to be doing all the work that should be done by the board by way of uh, employment, promotions, determination of salaries, conditions of service, procurement, uh, development of fiscal structures, and, and many, many, many of those things. So. When you talk about Parliamentary Service Board, it's like Audit Service Board. You have an Auditor General who is an independent person who should not be under the control of any board as far as the performance of his duties, the expression of opinion on audited accounts of state are concerned. They, he does not report to uh, uh, any other person apart from Parliament. 
but you have audit service an institution with workers uh, which runs a budget there's a procurement to do there's promotion and all that so there is an audit service board which looks after those those things so it is only in Ghana where <laughs> you, see, you see a chairman of audit service board fighting with the auditor general mm. about how his duty ought to be performed. Mm. By the same way, when you get to parliament, you have parliament as an institution, a law-making body. It's the main functions of parliament is to make yes. laws. And that law-making institution is chaired by the speaker of parliament who ranks number three in the scheme of things in the country. But the speaker's office or parliament ought to be supported with support staff and other things. So this parliamentary service board has a duty to manage the, 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 the institution as an institution to provide the environment for parliament to work effectively. And so the board has no mandate to interfere in the work of parliament in its lawmaking uh, functions. But parliament needs paper, it needs workers and other things. These are uh, you know, things that the, the parliamentary service board So you have a six-member committee or board. So mm -hmm. you have uh, Ibrahim Oseidu, former Tema West MP. You have mm -hmm. the Os current leader, Oseche Mensa, Haruna mm -hmm. Idrisus, mm -hmm. Tamale South, and then the speaker himself and the clerk. Yeah. What are your core jobs? So typically what do you do? Do you have to sit every day uh, or you sit quarterly uh, and you, are your <laughs> instructions binding on the house i haven't gone there yet so mm. i may not be able to answer those things but if i take my uh, former position as a buoy board chairman i were meeting once a month except there is an emergency meeting and then uh, when we t there are decisions that management will refer to us to take and when we take those decisions the management will go and implement them so we're not like managers you know board members are different from okay uh -huh, but those you are, who manage you are the opposition politician yes in the past mm -hmm. did the law say there should be pol former mps from either parties or it just said former mps and do we have in the past where there's an ndc government and there's an mpp MP on the former MP on the board, or we have an MPP government, we have an NDC MP like your situation. Have we had that before? We have never had a parliament which has been chaired by a speaker from a different party from the party that is uh, ruling. So we are still chatting uh, new waters. But in the past, um, the speaker will nominate people from his side. You know, <laughs> so in the immediate past, one, the speaker nominated Hackman and one other MPP MP. So they almost always come from the side of politics which the speaker belongs because certainly the speaker will not be nominating people from the other side. In this particular case, I would say that uh, Speaker Bagman has been very magnanimous in allowing MPP to nominate one person from their side to join. So I was extremely surprised when I heard that the MPP was still objecting to uh, <laughs> right Honorable Bagman's nomination of me as a, as a member. Because it's like, give me one inch, then when I give you one inch of land, you now say, let me park my car there. <laughs> you see, you shouldn't have even allowed and, any MPP. Uh, MP former MP to be nominated mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. He has offered to give you one, and you are now saying that he does not have the right to appoint. To do what he did. To do what he did. Let's talk about Bagbin now. Mm -hmm. On January 6th into January 7th, mm -hmm. did you really believe that you're going to have an NDC mem person as a Speaker of Parliament? Yes, I very much believed so. What, what, what? But let that me impression? add that not many people within NDC shared that belief. But I was very, very uh, positive that Abambagwin has had what it takes 
to be a speaker. And the situation we were facing, he was uh, the best qualified person. I believe you, you, you must have heard about my nomination, as it were, yeah. as one of the yes. two persons, myself yes. and Aban Bagman. Yes. And I said that, look, even a dead MPP, MP will not vote for me. <laughs> so, <laughs> not a living one. <laughs> not a living one. So, uh, if I have to go in, it will have to be 137, 137, 137. You several, vote for two years. Uh, yes, for two years. None of them will cross over to vote for me. So, I know Aban... So, so it was a serious consideration, your name. You were seriously yeah, yeah, considered. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and the party discussed this. Yes, discussed it. And uh, it was left between me and Alba. And I said that I didn't want the party to be voting or anything. So we can sort it out ourselves. So I indicated that, look, me, if I go there, it will be 137, 137, ad infinitum. So, but Bagwin has other qualities. Besides that, uh, Alban, uh, you know, profession as a lawyer has something to add to his role as a speaker. So I think that uh, he should go. So, and we did everything possible. I believe you saw me sitting in the gallery. I saw you throughout the night. You were working to, things out to give moral support to our side to stay the course and to make sure that we had. When as, as Did you have speaker. to bribe NPP MPs to vote for your speaker? No, 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 no. In fact, Bagwin had been a deputy speaker before. And I knew how much he was liked. If MPP had not approached that election with that level of seriousness, I believe Bagwin would have won by more than 20 votes. But the way it went, that was how come the margin of victory became that low. I know about many people who believe in Bagwin and uh, who will stick their neck out there. In the elections of Bagwin. 2016, there were claims that the Flagstaff House run by NDC at the time and the NDC headquarters had sponsored a candidate against Bagwin. If you loved him so much as a party, why were you pushing him out of parliament prematurely at the time? Uh, but the question you're asking, you're asking people who were at the first half house. I wasn't at the first half house. <laughs> you were, you were <laughs> you've been going to cabinet. You've been going house. to cabinet. Sir. I have you always... You are the chief administrator of the no, party. No, you are not talking about cabinet or anything. You said first half house. Whether yeah. there were messengers there, or <laughs> I wouldn't know. But if, uh, uh, guess what? For the three past elections, in every election that Bagman had contested, I made sure I spent not less than three days in, in, in his constituency, yes. Because we, we come a long way. So he's your friend? Aside, yes, yes, yes. Aside the politics? He's, he's, aside the politics, he's my friend. And I like him because of his frankness and truthfulness. Yes. So I've but always been there to support. But you didn't vote Black for him when he you contested to be flag bearer of your party. How did you know my vote? I thought you were <laughs> your poor John Muhammad. It is, a, it is voting is a secret, so, oh, so it's not you, supposed to be discussed. So you publicly. voted for him? I'm saying that voting is a secret, so it's not supposed to be discussed publicly. There are people and who so, think that making him the speaker puts him in poor position to be your next flag bearer. As a political party, do you think that was a suicidal mission? Since there are others who think John Muhammad should still be your candidate. Let me ask you something. I hope I can answer you. You know his ranking in terms of uh, uh, what do you call it importance in the country. Number three. Number three. Okay. If you were in number three, would you resign that position of number three to go and contest presidential primaries, not even as a president yet, <laughs> to go and contest presidential primaries, which you can lose? Then after that, what happened? You go home. You were already or, on your way home anyway. Or remain? No. If he's there as a speaker, he will be there as a speaker for four years, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Why would anybody uh, resign from a speakership two years into the speakership 
go and contest uh, presidential primaries has a very high chance of losing so that after the primaries he will go and stay home for the next two years or staying on as a speaker till the next election. If you were in his position, would you resign to continue? Is this your view or a discussion? I'm just it? asking you. <laughs> is that his, it's his, my view. Is that his thinking? It's my view. I, and I know he thinks correctly. And I know <laughs> when, he's assessing, when he's assessing those things, he will take this, this thing. In, okay. In but what about he doesn't contest, but he undermines his former contender? How about that? What do you say to that thought? Why should he be undermining his former contender. When MPP comes to power, he is sure to lose his position. And when NDC comes to power, he has a chance of getting another four years. Why would he be undermining anybody uh, from becoming a president on the ticket of NDC? He has said he's not going to do NDC's bidding while in the chair. Yes. Is that just talk for the cameras or that's real? And no. if it is real, that's problematic for you as a party that fought hard to put him there. That's a betrayal. Many people think he betrayed you. When in the chair, you expect him to do NDC bidding. So small, that if there is small. a vote, vote on the floor and NDC loses, then he announces that NDC has won that vote. He cannot. <laughs> we were told he, he cannot. Did. Once you are sitting there, you are supposed to be an independent umpire of debates. Okay. But outside the chair, he's NDC. The same way as I am NDC. He can do his NDC politics. He can attend NDC meetings. And if there is any other thing he can do to support NDC, why not? He can does, do it. Does but he when he is chairing debates, he cannot be NDC. That is why the laws do not allow the sitting, the person presiding to have a vote. So even where you, ha you are a deputy speaker, belonging to one side of the house. Once you are pre presiding, you cannot vote. And you are supposed to be an independent umpire when you are presiding. What is the role of the party in his work in parliament? Does he take briefing notes from the chief executive of the NDC? Does the chief executive of the NDC tell him that, okay, this issue that is coming to the chamber, this is our position as a party. And since you are one, we are whipping you in the line. Do you do something like that? Or you just allow him the free will so, to swim. So if you give him that briefing, how is he going to actualize what you tell him to do? He'll find a way. By what? By being impartial. I've told you that when he's staring, he's very, very impartial. So if you advise him that this is what you... You advise the leadership of your party and not him as a speaker. Because he is independent. So far, has he been fair to you as a party in your estimation to fair to ndc yes, as a NDC, party yes. i don't have any any qualms about the way he's been doing his work he's been very impartial and there's, i like that there's not been any ruling that you thought oh he has done the bidding of mpp no not at all your no. supporters don't agree though even your national communications officer That's mentioned why opinions are many opinions everybody can hold an opinion there may be people who have never had anything to do with parliament. The opinion they will share will be different from those of us who have been to parliament and know uh, what role the speaker uh, plays. Let me tell you something. There was an occasion where a member of parliament fiscally got up and assaulted another member of parliament on the floor of the house. Are you referring to something Sinahi and Ralph Tanko? Uh, is that the case or yeah maybe is that it is it or another 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 mm -hmm. occasion when tanko and uh, ahin's case happened i wasn't in parliament okay. there was an earlier one so somebody instead of getting up and drawing the speaker's attention it was just a son and that time he got up and and was accusing the speaker for not doing anything and the speaker said he didn't have uh, notice about what has happened. You understand? Even when there is lack of quorum, it takes somebody to get up to, to say that, Mr. Speaker, there is lack of quorum. Otherwise, so long as the speaker has quorum to begin work, he 
he will continue till there are three people in the house. And he himself cannot say that there is lack of quorum. <laughs> you understand? So those who don't understand these rules will just get up and be saying that, ah, Mr. Speaker, didn't you, say, didn't you see that there were only three people in the house and you, you put the question uh, uh, for vote but to but be taken? So case, there are a lot of things. And Ghanaians should have the right to freely criticize state institutions and state appointees. But this is not an ordinary person. Really this is well. someone who is a mouthpiece of the National Democratic Congress. His they voice... They do listen to me very well. I yeah, said, he said those he was who opinion. have parliamentary experience. So because Sami Jinfei okay. did not have parliamentary experience... He may not know how parliament runs at the, at the time he was talking. So uh, it is not something that... Uh, we should be worried about. So the national executive... And uh, Mr. Speaker himself was not worried about it because if you don't know, you have not experienced parliamentary uh, service or practice before. However intelligent you may be, there may be certain things that you may not know. As national executive of the NDC, mm -hmm. did you or do you approve of what Sami Jemfi wrote about the leadership of your side in parliament? We've, and the we've, speaker? we've Resolve those issues, so I don't want How? us to go back. We don't mm. know the We've held, but if we resolve problems within NDC, we, we don't have to come and respond. But it was public. I report it, it, was a, it, was, <laughs> it was a public. It was a public <laughs> position, so we have to have a public position of the party. Like, <laughs> no, then you go and ask those who were. Did the party make a statement on that one? Not yet. Uh -huh. So why do you want the so party? So there's a resolution. But yes. Have you punished him for the uh, transit or you endorse uh, what no, he No, I'm saying that there has been a resolution. However, the resolution works. General, you're a, very, in favor of you're, a very, you're a very courageous man who don't mince your words. Yes. But it seems words are failing you, and I'm No, no, words are not failing me. What I have you think done to Sami Jinfi? Have you applauded you, him? Or why do you, you think that? Why do you, you think reprimanded that him? As a general secretary, matters that are of public interest, I come out to address the press. <laughs> if they are not of public, uh, uh, meant for the public, I don't talk about them in public. That's a matter of principle. This is yeah. face to face <laughs> on City TV. Johnson, I said, um, is my guest, is General Secretary of the NDC. That's not it. Uh, we are not done with Parliament. The leadership of NDC in Parliament, there are many party supporters who think they've been let down by the approval of the ministers and so on. When we come back, we'll ask the party's chief executive what he thinks of that. Don't go away. This is Fact Finder from the BBC. We live in a world where news travels fast. And sometimes, it's hard to differentiate fact from fiction. Fact Finder brings fact-checking from the newsroom up close so you can separate truth from chaff. Be empowered to tell what's fake from what's real. Watch Fact Finder by the BBC on City TV every Wednesday at 6pm. City TV. It's your world. Welcome back to Face to Face on CCTV. My guest is uh, Johnson. I said, Don Ketia, you're welcome back. Um, you, you have refused to give me what the party's position on Sami oh, Jinfi wow. is. If you were a member of the Parliamentary Service Board and Sami Jinfi wrote the things he wrote to cast those aspersions against the Speaker of the House, what would you have done? It does not constitute part of the work of Parliamentary Service Board at all. It doesn't? No. Oh. That's why I'm saying that people need to learn about the institution and how they work. Okay. Uh -huh. If so you were... Parliament has its own um, um, bodies and institutions that deals with matters of uh, contempt of Parliament and all that. Mm -hmm. You haven't heard Parliament citing Sami Jamfi for contempt or anything. And so Parliament has its own way of dealing with those issues. So whatever you argue about outside Parliament, doesn't change anything okay. in the parliament. But you see, yes. your party supporters are watching you now. Mm -hmm. The confidence that they are supposed to have in the leadership of the House mm -hmm. on your side mm -hmm. has waned because your party's spokesperson has said what they did was a betrayal of the NDC's cause. 
you should have a position on Listen. that as a person or as a general secretary or as an executive. And you should that's share why that I'm saying with your that. supporters. That's why I'm saying that. Sami might not have known how parliament works. In fact, Bagbin is not part of the leadership of the party in parliament. Let's leave Bagbin. He, he mentioned <laughs> so so what you are talking about, yes. about people and lumping people together, this yes. one has done this, this mm -hmm. one has done this. Perhaps he was speaking uh, as an NDC man with the maybe, green and red uh, blood. He was, he was offended. Maybe that is why Parliament in its wisdom realized that some of the statements could have come out of the ignorance of the work and procedures in Parliament. So... Let's, let's walk over it and do something. But you don't else. think that you That's should right. reassure your party supporters that what your... We have, since, we have since done so long time ago. We've called meetings uh, and issued uh, statements. Council of Elders have issued a statement and all that. So I don't think that it is, it is uh, it's a uh, you know, path that has been beaten... <laughs> okay. Over Be and over again. Before so Akufado was sworn in, see how. Mm -hmm. before Akufado was, you had called press conferences, NDC, mm -hmm. and you insisted that you had the majority in the House. Yes. There were court issues, mm -hmm. we went to Parliament, your mm -hmm. side sat on the majority mm -hmm. side, and all of that. You eventually got the Speaker. Mm -hmm. Have you abandoned that quest and campaign to be the majority in the House? Not at all. Your leader, Haruna, is called court. the minority leader. We have eight cases in court now. So. We are very expectant that, uh, that you can our majority will, will, will be restored after the, the adjudication of those cases. To what end? So long as... No, if it flips now, then Haruna becomes majority leader. What purpose would it serve? You have 137, you still lost the vote on no, the... No, no, no. It has, it has a lot of... It changes a lot of things in the House. Do you think you can ever get that flip done in the court? Why? Unless there is executive pressure on maybe the, the, the courts. Because we believe in the strength of our cases. Have you been following the cases in court? How yes, I've been following. Doing? And in fact, Thursday, the next sitting of the one on Techman will happen on Thursday. So we have been keenly following, following what is happening there. You're positive. Very positive. What about your gentleman? Because, who has because been you see, if there is... Elections are to be declared on the basis of votes cast and counted. And votes have been cast and counted, and you have the record of it, which is shared by everybody. If you have a government which is democratically minded, this matter wouldn't have even gone to court. It would have been dealt with long, long time ago. But we are where we are because we, we think that... Uh, uh, the executive is uh, overreaching its bounds in several other otherwise independent state institutions. That's why we are having this, this problem. And, and you can see it happening in the appointment of this parliamentary board. You know that it was an NPP position that I should not be made a board member. Mm -hmm. They stood against it. This proposal came more than three months ago. And it's because of the statement between uh, the speaker and <laughs> majority leader because majority leader has to give advice for the speaker to also act so they tackled it from all angles highly placed ministers approaching backbone insisting that any other person can be appointed, but not as Edun Katia. It is not about general secretary, it's about me as Edun Katia. You understand? And Bagman said that he's the right person I know can perform the work, the job. That's why he was put there. So all these uh, accusations as to uh, why should a general secretary be uh, a board member of parliament and so on, they are just much ado about nothing. They are just fabricated. I mean, for 25 years or so now, Parliament has been appointing board members. Why should the appointment of Asir Nkati attract so much press? It's because the government in power objects to it. And the Speaker insists that this is the appointment I have made. The law says the Speaker should appoint, and I have made my appointment. And that's the end of the matter. Because come to think about it. 
I'm surprised that people like Tim and Sambonsu will be complaining about who can become a board member, who cannot become a board member. Do you know the most interesting board membership this country has ever had? For President Kofo to become a board member while he was a sitting president. Which one was that? He was the first Bui board chairman and was reporting to the Minister for Energy. John who Kofo. then will be reporting to him as a president. It happened in this country. Which period? It was approved during uh, 2000 and uh, from 2000 to 2004. I mean, somewhere late 2000 and, and uh, yeah, somewhere late 2000. I was in parliament when the Bui agreement, master agreement was being signed. He was a board member. They put in, how can and it was a mistake. board members be appointed even when the project agreement <laughs> was now being signed? They put it in there as a condition, and we approved it in the House with MPP majority. That President Kufo should be the first board member for Bui. It wasn't power. a mistake. It wasn't a mistake. It was a debate, a whole debate. We raised all the issues about it. That the a president, was in the house at the time. he was a whip in the House, <laughs> and he spoke in support of it. So what has changed? So President Kufo became uh, the first chairman of Bui Board. So when I became the chairman subsequently, I was trying to invite him as a former chairman to come and clarify certain <laughs> issues. <laughs> you did know, he, did he come? And it was, no, their way of fighting back was where they fabricated Bui blocks being oh, sold. You were, you that were, was you were doing Bui uh, blocks. Uh, is that true though? Yes, you, it uh, wasn't true. It was much about nothing. So that you was, didn't carry any blocks from Bui? No, 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 no. Carry blocks from wheat to where? You were cutting blocks from wheat. No, they were saying that I made blocks yes. for the project to yes. be constructed. You didn't do that. Go and look at the dam. The dam is not constructed with blocks. <laughs> <laughs> so how can... The dam is but not But do you have a block factory? Yes, I have a block factory. Is some, it close to wheat? Some contractors who were given a subcontract for some of the resettlement villages. They came to buy blocks from my site. That's all. Oh, so you <laughs> supplied blocks for the resettlement villages? Yes, which was a subcontract. But you're a board member. But it has nothing to do with the board. That's conflict uh, of interest. No, 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 no. Maybe you don't understand conflict of interest help very me, well. Help me. <laughs> you see, you have Bui Power Authority, mm -hmm. which is supervising uh, 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 the construction of a 10 key project. Mm -hmm. A 10 key project means the contractor buys his material, his everything. And so forth. All that the Bui board will do is to verify the quality of the material. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now this contractor sublets part of his job, that is resettlement uh, villages, to local contractors. Mm -hmm. And these local contractors came were looking for material to buy. Some came as far as to Kumasi to buy blocks, some bought Sunyane. And the my board facility, said, you know what, I my have facility was uh, in Banda, and two of the contractors who won jobs under the subcontract, they were my clients. So they just came and bought blocks there and conveyed them to their site to work. So it means that um, I, I was, I was, I was uh, uh, guilty of conflict Supplying of interest. Blocks. But they, they intentionally hived that one just to... Uh, Remove the Kufour thing. To remove the Kufour thing, because you see, and that problem has not been solved even as we sit here. So it's still in the law that the president can be a board member of the... Well, we that is what, when he became a board member, nobody has prosecuted him for doing so. So there's precedence. And, yes. And that can so be if a president can be a board member, working under his own minister, okay, then... Why are you complaining in, in, uh, in a particular MPP government? Why are you complaining that a general secretary cannot be a board member? Let's move back to <laughs> Parliament. Um, for many NDC people, mm -hmm. you had assured them that you had won majority. Well, it turns out you didn't. You were neck and neck. The Formina MP gave the MPP an upper hand over you. But at least they believe that you could hold the government so much that they cannot run with everything where we've had a rubber stamp parliament in the past. They saw you 
or your members at the appointments committee take on nominees of Nana Dodan Kwakufado, the president, whom you were challenging in court at the yeah. time. Yeah. And if they looked at the kind of questions that were being thrown at the nominees and the expose yeah. that we, we came to see from the appointment committee, they were so happy that finally NDC was working and parliament was working. Then it came to a vote and your party members betrayed your foot soldiers. As a general secretary of the party, what do you make of that? Well, we're all very worried about the decision of our side to pass appointees like uh, interior minister, health minister, uh, defense minister, and uh, Howard Kumsen. We're all very furious about it. Because these are persons about whose stewardship we have made so much noise. And we thought that uh, this is an opportunity for us to exert accountability from them. But uh, they went into the vote and things didn't work quite the way we expected. It nearly created a problem between leadership and the leadership in parliament. And I believe that was when, you know, because we were resonating the feelings of the, of the party, uh, base. party base. Now, it happened. And so you don't cry over split milk. We needed to act quickly to put the party together. And that was what we did quickly when the Council of Elders came in. We tried to resolve all these issues about uh, statements made by party, senior party members and responses from our senior uh, MPs and so on. So we've tried to put this together. And we had a, a challenge about the unity of our caucus also in Parliament. So there was some work there that we needed to do. Uh, we have come this far, and I'm confident that uh, we, we, we have regained grounds. You, you had a list forward. of nominees you had presented to the leadership in the House and said, make sure these did not go through, we were told. Did that really happen? Did you go to the House with a list and said, <laughs> make sure they don't go through? No, 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 no. no. But what, you went there happened, during the What voting. happened was that all of us were looking for, uh, were observing the proceedings. And so at the end of the proceedings, we all had, the, uh, had to sit down to review the, the videos and all that. And we realized that these are people who should not pass. So you had what, and seven so, people or five people? I remember it was about seven people at that time. So you didn't want them about, to go through? We didn't think that they, they, they should go through. Then eventually they went round, 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 round and came to the conclusion that, well, uh, the cases of about three of them was very bad. So let's focus on the three. So the party membership and the leadership itself was shocked when eventually we heard that Everybody has been passed. So the anger from our base was understandable. So we realized that, well, what has happened has happened. There are people who think that it, it is a failure of John Sinasido and Ketia Samofo Sampofu and the leadership of the NDC who do not have control over Harun Idrisu and Montaka Mubarak and the no, rest. What do you say to that? When somebody so it is a failure of party over parliament? No, I don't think so. I think that uh, it's a collective failure. Collective failure in the sense that the one who is casting the vote, he decides whether he will cast the vote according to what the party was, was, was demanding. Do you not have a whip system as a party? We have a whip system. So that failed you? By and large, yes. General, you managed to elect an opposition person as a speaker. Yes. That's no mean a feat. Yes. If you did that, this should have been a walk in the past. Clearly something was wrong somewhere. Was it money? No, no. You see, the, the, the issues at stake were different. In the case of Alban Bagdan, we're going for 
a position for NDC. In the case of uh, nominees for ministerial appointment, we're not going for anything for NDC. You were. You were going to excite Why? your party. So base. after after voting against those guys, the NDC will now appoint their replacements. No. Uh -huh. But the so NDC will be that, happy. That's, that's but the NDC will be happy that mm -hmm. it prevented people it thought were not fit to be ministers from being ministers, and the NDC would have been happy. Yes, that's why that it projected. That's why I'm saying that that the, what was at stake was different. If um, a rabbit who is running away from being hunted by a lion, his attitude will be different from that of the lion. The lion will only go hungry for a while if the rabbit escapes. <laughs> but if the rabbit makes a mistake, then that is the end of his life. So when you, you approach these things, there are different things at, at stake and therefore different motivations. So the to be honest with you, mm -hmm. if you vote against some people and they are not made ministers, the next set of nominees are not going to be NDC people anyway. But you would have established that uh, people who were duty bearers have acted in certain ways and you have exacted accountability. That's the end of the matter. But the people who may be appointed may be worse than the ones you are voting against. So when the MPs were approaching uh, uh, the vote, I believe that they, they underestimated the anger of the people against those ministers. As we speak now, I don't have any evidence to suggest that they must have been under one influence or the other. But what is clear to me is that they underestimated the anger of the foot soldiers. I have seen and that is what informs their attitude of Sammy to Jenfi. Towards, no, 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 towards this uh, finance minister's yes. approval. Mm -hmm. Even when the party uh, held several meetings and concluded that we think that uh, we shouldn't split hairs about uh, Ofurata's approval, we believe that he's a lame duck minister at this stage. So if the government wants a lame duck finance minister, let them have it. His work will make it easier for us to, to win elections. So let him go. Even when so that, that decision... Was that a party position? Yes, that was a party That was position. communicated by Haruna on the floor? I didn't watch him on the floor, but that is a party position. Okay. Which we communicated. So allow and him you have to go also, and crash the government. You, so have you, also, you have also maybe read my statement, which, which I issued, mm -hmm. uh -huh, conveying the feeling of the party. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in that particular case, even after the decision had been taken, I could see that a lot of our members of parliament found it very difficult to even contribute. They didn't want to be associated with any process that has approved <laughs> Ken Oforata <laughs> because of the experience they had in the previous Your former week. MP for Kumbungu, Ras Mubarak, mm -hmm. who contested mm -hmm. to be a Council of State member, is very angry. He took to Twitter and said, that is a betrayal. He's even mm -hmm. asking for an overhaul of the leadership of the House. Is that something you're planning? About what? Because about yesterday, Oforata or about the earlier... The Oforata part, he... Mm -hmm. He, he connects it to giving your 40 vehicle to a driver. I can put a tweet. I can read that for you. I don't <laughs> have a hand here. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. essentially, you're saying that Ken is a lame duck president, a minister. Mm -hmm. He's going to lead the government to crash. Then you yeah. can f use the opportunity. Mm -hmm. You have betrayed Ghanaians then. If you think he's not fit to be minister, you should between, have presented Between prevented. us and President Akufuad, who has betrayed Ghanaians? He hasn't betrayed Ghanaians. He was won an election. Ah. And, he's and he a appoints a finance minister. And you have the so power if to he has him. appointed a finance minister, whom he believes will do the work, and he ends up appointing the wrong person, then between him and those of us who are in opposition, who has betrayed Ghanaians, it is you who have been given the power of our. We don't have the power to appoint. <laughs> we can only criticize somebody's appointment, and I'm saying that between the one who has the power, who has been given the people's mandate mm -hmm. 
to appoint a finance minister to run the affairs of the country, uh, of our economy well, between him and us. Who has the, uh, disappointed Ghanaians? You have the power to prevent that from happening. Where is that, that power? You have 137 members of parliament. Uh -huh. Against 138. Against 138. And you then you are saying we have the power. Good. I have found Ras Mubarak's, <laughs> I, I have found Ras Mubarak's tweet. Let me read it for you. It uh -huh. says the argument that Ken messed the economy so mm -hmm. he should be approved to face the consequence is so weak. Would the minority leader hand over his car to a driver who out of sheer incompetence crashed his car? Mm -hmm. If you had unanswered questions, have Ken cleared them before approval? What's the rush? He's talking about minority leader handing over his car to somebody. In this case, it is President Kufuado handing over his car because the car doesn't belong to minority leader. So he himself is confused about well, the, NDC, <laughs> the analogy is given. Is the NDC leadership considering changing your leadership in parliament? Well, there is some work in progress. The work in progress being that after every election, we reconstitute the leadership of parliament, even if it means to uh, reconfirm them. We haven't done that yet because of the court case. And so we started, but we got to a point where we felt that let us finish with the court case and we'll come back to it. So it is something that so we, we are going to... we may see a change or a retention very soon. An yes, of yes, a but there will be a definite statement that, you know, when you have a situation where some people think that, oh, these people are not permanent, they themselves, they don't have the confidence to act mm -hmm. the way they should be acting. Okay. And then there are other aspirants who want to occupy their position. They may also be acting in ways to upstage mm -hmm. or undermine them when they so know that to, the, the opportunity exists. How soon should we see so this? So we will look at it and then we will firm it. I'm sure by the time they return from the break, we would have uh, okay. taken these decisions. This is Face to Face on CCTV. My name is Omar Sanda, and my guest is General Secretary of the NDC, John Sina Sedo Nketia. He led the NDC to court in 2012 and 2013. He won. In 2020, he went and crashed. We asked him what next for the NDC and John Mahama. Stay with us. City TV is live on DSTV. Go to channel 363. On Go TV, access City TV on channel 182. On a digital TV, please press the menu button on the remote control and run a new search on your TV. Take note that without an antenna, you cannot access City TV on your television. City TV can be accessed on a free to air digital box like the Go TV and Star Times box. City TV, it's your world. You're welcome back to Face to Face. Let me continue and conclude this conversation with John Sinatero Ketia. You succeeded uh, beautifully in 2013, but in 2020, you threw John Muhammad under the bus. You said he should be brought in to come and answer questions. You were not the one who's going to. Is it that you didn't agree for the case to be taken to court? Or maybe we were not following the I case. I followed it so keenly. I got the news. You asked me a personal question as to what President Mahama was thinking at a particular point in time. Yes. And I said that I wasn't in his head. So I'm not the one to answer that but question. But there is so, there. You had no, but the court earlier in the morning had delivered the ruling that I am not the petitioner. Mm -hmm. The court had earlier struck out portions of my witness statement that I cannot say those things unless I am the petitioner. So then moments later, you want to ask me about what is in the head of the petitioner. How should I answer you? He wasn't angry with you that you threw him under the bus and said... No, 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 no. If it was a very good answer to the, to the judges. For the viewers... Because the same judges who say that we are striking this part of your witness statement out because you, are, you cannot say this because you are not the petitioner. Then in the next moment, you are asking me questions that should be uh, known to the petitioner. The state of mind and what he was thinking, what his belief was at that time. 
That's why I, 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 I responded. But for I some responded. analysts and critics, you sounded cheeky and disinterested in the case. You were not the Johnson. I said, don't get here with you. Apart from the part you were punching cheeky, on the calculator. Cheeky towards whom? Towards the whole case. The whole, your attitude was... <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I, it was, it was, it was, it was... Uh, were you not confident in the court? I was very... Which court? The Supreme Court. The Supreme one. Court. Yes. Well, the outcome has shown my lack of... Has proved my lack of confidence. Right. So you didn't have confidence and that's why you had the approach you had. And you were, no, you it has nothing to do with the approach. I was there to do the work as I have sworn to do. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But to tell you what, I didn't have that confidence that this court would deliver anything better than you, what they did. You didn't? No. Personally or as yes, a party? Yes, personally I didn't have that confidence. What was and I have been proven right. What was the, the way the court went about this thing. Everybody knew that it was a mistrial. There was no proper trial there. You think so too? Yes, I think so. I still believe in that. I haven't Where spoken... Where mistrial means what? I haven't spoken... It means the trial was not fair. I haven't spoken yet because I'm waiting for my lawyers to speak based on their advice. So I'll speak on the court matter. So let's put it aside, but take it home that I said that what happened at the Supreme Court was a mistrial. You didn't trust the judges? I said that everything that happened was a mistrial. You know that, uh, uh, is it Malcolm X or one of the American civil rights leaders? He said that when two people agree <laughs> always, then one is a liar. Now seven people agreeing always. Always. So what does it mean? So <laughs> let, us, let us leave it there. I'll, I'll talk about my views about the whole court later on. You didn't trust the judges. Do you think they were independent enough? I'm saying that there was a mistrial. Why did you advise John Muhammad to go to a platform that you thought he was not <laughs> going to get justice there? Who said that he went there because of my advice? You are the I'm talking about to... my person. I said I never, I never thought that. The way everybody was chanting, go to court, go to court, go to court, it sent the signal that there was something that has been cooked at the court. Waiting for it to come and eat. Yes. And you went and you ate <laughs> it. So, so that, was, that, was, that was all about it. And, and so I'm, I'm sure majority of Ghanaians believe in, uh, with me, uh, agree with me that that was a complete mm. mistrial. Yeah. It was a missed opportunity to hold duty bearers to account for their stewardship. And it was something that has drawn our democracy backwards. And I guess that mm -hmm. if we are not careful, the next election will be worse than this one. There was another, or there's another majority side of Ghanaians who think that you went with a weak case and you've been thrown out and that you didn't even merit to be heard for the number of months that you were heard because you just wasted everybody's time. They even think you should have been slapped with charges and I'm fine. happy you are saying some Ghanaians. It doesn't include me, so let's make progress. <laughs> <laughs> let's make progress. Why hasn't John Muhammad called Nana Kufado to concede defeat, like happened in 2013, when Nana Kufado called him to concede defeat? If you have the opportunity, you can ask well, you, President you Muhammad. You want to represent him in court. Maybe you know, maybe you know <laughs> why he decided not to do you that. You are saying calling somebody to say A or B. It is between the two of them. Why should I know? No, it hasn't happened. I say, so why should I know? Because why should I know the, why it hasn't happened and the reason behind it not happening? He was your flag bearer. You sponsored him yes. into an election. You paid his, 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 his campaign for him. I don't know about it, but I believe that he also thinks that there was a mistrial. So you are not going to ever call an and congratulate him as a party? Are you talking to me as a, I'm speaking as to a you Ketia, as general secretary or as a flag bearer? No, as <laughs> <laughs> or as running with hopeful. <laughs> <laughs> I think there was a time you were... You were <laughs> <laughs> Running with that never was. That never was. <laughs> no, I'm speaking to you as someone I believe who has the ears of your flag bearer. Who sponsored your flag bearer into an election? Who campaigned for you? I'm not very, very clear on this issue. You are asking me about what the flag bearer thinks, wh why he didn't do what, he, uh, what you think he's Considered, supposed to do. Yeah. And I'm saying that I don't know. I ask and him. then you are going to, you follow up to say, so you are not going to do it. Okay. Why am I? going to do it. Let Have me I called Akufuadu to congratulate him before in any of the previous Have elections? you called John Boydou to congratulate him after the election? No, no, no. You, you won't do it? No, I haven't because it's not a, there's no established practice like that. John Boydou didn't contest any elections. His party contested and won. He defeated you. 
his presidential candidate contested. That's why the, the matter in court was between presidential candidates. Why have you sacked Aloti Jacob from your party? Because you are not tolerant because of the Because he, he acted against the party's rules. And uh, every political party or every organization exists uh, on the strength of its rules. When we come together right now to form an organization, we establish the rules for that organization. And we, 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 we accept and take onto ourselves the duty to run the organization by the rules. And so when you flout the rules, the rules must take their course. Aluti Jacob flouted the constitution and the constitution took its course. So no, the, 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 the result is that he's no longer a member of the party. Kokoyin Doho and uh, Stephen Atubiga are before uh, the disciplinary process. So the law will take its, its course in due course. Personally, what do you think? Should they be expelled? And this is not you, so that your view here will not be... Why do you on. think that I should be prejudging the work of uh, no, disciplinary No, I want your personal opinion. The disciplinary committee will hold me for contempt. <laughs> thank you very much for speaking to us. <laughs> yeah, Omar, thank you. That's Johnson Asiedu <laughs> Nketiah, General Mosquito, as it's popularly called, uh, General Secretary of the NDC, speaking to me on Face to Face. My name is Umar Rusanda Amadu. Thank you for watching. Stay with City TV. It's your world.